What we're going to be going over today is the ultimate imbalance. It also will make the fair value gap look like weak sauce in terms of a draw for price, in terms of resistance and support, and overall just a magnet. All right, so we have the four different gaps I want to go over in this video. We'll go over through each one, how to use it, when to use it, when not to use it. That way you can take it in your trading tomorrow and start implementing it and making money with it immediately. The first one I want to touch on is the one that I'm trading right now, which is the new week gaps. So this is called a new week gap because it only forms when the opening of a new week starts. If you're not familiar with futures, futures work like this. At 5 p.m., the market closes for one hour and then it will reopen Monday night at 6 p.m. Now this continues until Friday at 5 p.m. Then the market closes and then it will reopen again on Sunday night at 6 p.m. I mean, when the market closed Friday at 5 p.m. right here, it closed at the price point of 19700 This Sunday, the 21st, when price opened up, it opened up right here. So this price point all the way down to where it closed is going to be the gap that is named New Week Gap, right? Makes sense, right? Because it's a gap between the closing price on Friday and the opening price the next week on Sunday night. I think ICT refers to as NWOG, New Week Opening Gap. You can call it that if you like. I just call it New Week Gap. This is like an inefficiency in price. It's like a, to be you're busy, it's like a fair value gap. It's just an inefficiency in the price delivery, right? So price was not delivered in a fair manner here, right? No one got to buy or sell in this area. So when price opened up and they came all the way up here and rejected, you could be relatively certain that price is going to be making its way down into the gap. Now these gaps like to fill in a certain manner, which we'll get into that a little bit later. There's a clear pattern that I have witnessed over and over and over again that uh, takes place with these gaps. Now if we go to ES here, and this exists on any futures product from the Bitcoin to oil to gold, Forex pairs on futures, um, the individual stock futures, they're there. I use it all the time with analysis. Now, if we look at ES's gap here, boom, almost filled it all the way, right? Still left a little bit of it unfilled, but you best believe that it will fill it, which takes me to... I should probably be going short, right? So ES and NQ both have left a little bit of this open. Let's go ahead and short this here. Targeting a fill of that gap. And you guys will see the power of this because I'm pretty certain I'm the only person that takes real trades in videos on YouTube. Many back test trading, but it's not real. They're not actually showing you that they even know what they're doing. They're just talking about something or finding something in the price action. Anyone can do that. My child, my 11 year old son can do it. He does it all the time. He looks at price and I tell him, well, find me this. And he finds me and he can teach it to me just fine. But doing is a different beast altogether. So why is this important? Because it acts as a magnet for price. Let's go to an hour chart and I'll show you what I mean. Now we're going to start with previous price action. We'll go to hey back here, three minute. Now the color boxes are the different sessions. So the blue is New York session and then the yellow is going to be Asia session. So the blue right here is a new week opening gap because price closed here and then it opened up here. So you have a new, new gap. So you see how price went through it, came back, tested it, and it acted as support. That's one way you can use it. But then after that, it just becomes non-existent as a support and resistance. It goes right through. I take it off my chart after that happens. But the other way I do really, really, really like to use it, and I use other gaps the same way, is if we are above or below it at a certain time, it's likely to go a certain way after that. So, so if after 9 p.m. we are below the gap, it's likely to continue going lower. Also, when we get into regular trading hour gaps, that's when the real power comes into play because uh, comparing new week and new day opening gaps to regular hour trading gaps is like comparing 
a flash crash to a small expansion downward. There's no comparing the two of them. Now let's go to a new week here. Here's another small one that opened up. This one is, again, very small. It's the bigger ones that are going to be much more powerful. So you can see here, again, at 9 p.m., where are we in terms of the gap? We're above it. What does price do? It goes up. Now let's go back to the example we were looking at live because I'm going to show you guys here what I'm talking about, the power of this. So boom, we're back inside the gap. This is the live market. I'm no longer on replay. I've made $1,400, $1,500 in here just basing the trade off the fact that I know that this regular trading hour gap is here and it has not been filled yet. So it's likely to come down to here. I'm going to go ahead and take some of this off. And then now we're going to go into new day opening gaps because they are just as powerful as these ones. It's just a different gap. The only gap that I would truly believe is more powerful is the new uh, is the regular trading hour gap. All right, new day gaps. Now this gap is going to be from a session to session, from Asia session to New York session. Here's an example of one. Price closed here at 5 p.m. right there, and then opened up here, created this gap. Let's go ahead and put on our chart. So you see right here, it filled it to the tick and then offered probably the best trade of the entire 24 hours after that. This is a good example of many would be saying that this was a turtle soup that happened here because of this low, even though it went up 25 points lower, but who cares? It's still a turtle soup. No, it would drop down here simply to fill that in. Once it filled it in, it then could go up. And then you can get a second trade here out of it during New York session. And then once below it, you get a third trade there acting as resistance support. I think this is probably just random because price was actually just coming back to this here. I think it just happened to uh, be a coincidence. A lot of times you see that with the levels on charts. Any kind of line you put on a chart, you'll see price interact with it. And you could say that that's because of that line on the chart. But you, you do it with random lines and you'll see what I'm saying. You'll be like, oh, okay. Because price seemingly acts like it's responding to it, but it's a random line on chart. So um, that's not the case. Let me clear that up right now. Let's do that. Let's do that experiment. Uh, I think it'll really open some of your guys' eyes up to this. All right. Now I picked a random uh, day and price. Let me delete all the current lines I have on my chart. Now we're just going to randomly put lines on our chart. Just every so often. doesn't really matter where. They need to be random. Random kind of spacing. Put them wherever you feel like is a good area. Now this is a problem with indicators that have a whole bunch of levels on them, like pivot points. They look like they're interacting with price, but they're not. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward here. We got our we got our quote unquote levels on our chart. Are you guys seeing what I'm talking about here? Many trades could have been taken off of random lines on our chart. So we, let's go back and look at this. So, so we started right here, right? So price comes up, it taps our line and goes down. Trade, it uh, goes through it, comes back, trade that's a good short off that level all the way up oh look at that there's another beautiful trade there price then bounces off of this one there's a beautiful trade let's keep going here oh there's a beautiful long off the off the line right there let's go a little bit higher with time frame so it speeds it up here oh beautiful trade there oh there's another beautiful short off of that one nice short another one another trade another one another one so you guys are seeing what i'm talking about here just because you put a line on your chart does not mean that it makes it uh, valuable in any kind of way. Precision is the element that makes an indicator or concept valuable. Because precision equals risk. The higher the precision, the lower the risk. Random lines and charts produce very good trades, actually. If you just put them on your chart randomly and trust them, uh, you probably do all right, honestly, but you would have to be risking a lot of money. So precision is what matters here, guys. Not uh, the fact that the price interacts with the line, because you saw here that random lines cause reactions. It's just random. So when you are putting these on your chart, I believe that you should take them off after price fills them, because the reason they are filled is because they're inefficient of buying or selling. 
So once it is filled, it now is no longer inefficient of buyer buying or selling. It has been completed. The cycle is complete. I believe price moves for redelivery most of the time. There is a normal overwhelming buying or selling, but other than that, it's moving up and down and being pushed one way too hard, and then it needs to go back and fill that in area in, or it's being pushed too hard another area, and then it needs to go back and fill that in. That's why price is always going up and down, up and down, up and down. Because when it went up here, some part of this area was too fast and it needs to be repaired. So when price comes down, repairs it, gives the people, gives the, gives the participants in the market that opportunity that they missed. And then once that opportunity has been re-delivered, it continues in the original direction, creates another um, area of unfair delivery of price, comes back down, fills it in. All right, so this gap here is the one that we're dealing with tonight. And there's a new day opening gap. The bigger, the better. There's a new day opening gap. There was a new day opening gap, but it filled it. But like I said, the most powerful one is the regular trading hour gaps. You get the most information from it, and they act as a magnet. And that become that's because institutions are very aware of regular trading hour gaps, and they're a big part of their decision-making process. All right, and now we are on volume imbalances. So you're probably like, what do you mean? That's not a gap. Like, yeah, it is a gap, guys. All right, so here I have a slide on volume imbalances. So how do these work? So a volume imbalance is the gap between a candle close and a candle open. Just like between a session close and a session open, it creates a gap. This creates a gap as well. Aggressive buying or selling is the first candle closes. Right here, aggressive buying up. It closes. Price is then pushed up before the second candle opens. So then it, that's aggressive price movement, right? For it to do that, that creates a... Um, volume amounts as the second candle opens up higher than it closed. They act as a support and resistance, will draw price to it, all time frames best on high time frames such as a daily chart. Just like any other concept or thing, it, it obviously is going to work better on the higher time frames. Let's go over a few examples of this. I personally really like to use them when scalping, but you can use them um, any way you like. Let's go to start with a daily chart here. They're just really easy to see on the daily chart, right? Because the daily charts, volume imbalances, they are a new week or new day opening gap. It's what they are on the daily chart. I'll show you an example right here. So this candle came down. This was on a Thursday. And then we had Friday's opening, right? And then boom, Monday. So this is the difference here. We can highlight this and draw a circle around it and find it on a lower time frame. A lot of people don't realize what these are on a lower time frame. So here is where price closed right there. And then it opened up here. So the gap was actually from there to there. And then it opened up up here and then it went down. So yeah, that's the new week opening gap. It's the volume imbalance on the daily chart. But let me show you guys how I use them. Let's go live price action right now. I like to use them on a low time frame. It's all right. So here's another volume imbalance here. So you can put these on your chart and the way I use them is a little bit different from most people. Most people use them as like a fair value gap. Um, I don't use them that way. I do recognize that they're there and they need to be filled, but I think the best way to use them is as follows. So if we look at the price action here. When this candle closed and this one opened, it created a volume imbalance there, a little gap between the opening and close. Now, price should not close above it if it's bearish, right? So that's how I use them. I know that um, they're going to act as resistance if bearish. So then if I see it come into there and it won't close above it like it did here, I'll short it going down. I do this often when I'm looking for an entry. And um, price has already moved without me. I'll use them as that. So there's an example right here. So price pushed through it, but does it close above it or not? That's the question we're trying to figure out here. So if price now closes back below that, I will go ahead and enter short. 
No, so it ended up closing above it, right? So let's go ahead and exit that and go long. And then put our, our stop right below the volume and bounce created. There's another one right there. Now let's see if we can get above that other one. So you can use them to help you decide direction. Uh, beautiful. So you see how the first clue was that price went through the volume and bounce. Right? Now you can flip them. That's pretty much what you're doing. It's a bearish volume and bounce. I flipped it as a clue to price. Yeah, that's one right here. So you have a volume and bounce there. You extend it in time. If price is able to get above that and holds it, then it's a long. That's the way I like to use it. You can use it on pretty much any time frame. They show up on all kinds of different time frames. You see them on the one minute. The higher time frames, they're going to be bigger, right? So they're going to be better, more likely to work. On the one hour, they're, they're honestly kind of rare. You're not going to see them that often. So here's one on the one hour. So it's a bearish one, right? So remember the random line thing, just because it came down into here does not mean it was any time acting as support resistance. Except for when this candle opened up and this wick went down and it touched the top of it. So that is an example of it uh, being for real because it's precise. The rest of these aren't precise. Precision is what dictates a strategy, concept, or anything's validity. Just because you see it randomly work does not mean it works. That just means it randomly worked. Right? You see this with turtle soups all the time. People say, oh, that was a turtle soup, but it went 100 points past the liquidity. So it's not a turtle soup. All right. This one is the ultimate imbalance. It was what, the one I was talking about in the beginning. It will make fair value gaps look like weak sauce because they do act as magnets for price on the high time frame. So I've been using these without fail for years now. And the regular trading hour gap has gave me a major edge over other traders and their ability to make proper analysis on price. A lot of people don't even recognize that these exist. Okay, let's get into regular trading hours. The ultimate imbalance and draw on price. Because most of the time the draw, which is the reason why price is moving somewhere, it's target the underlying context behind the market move. That's what people mean when they say draw on liquidity. So I don't like the phrase. I think draw on price is much better because it isn't saying that liquidity is the reason that price is moving. Price does not move for liquidity all the time. Something very important to understand. It's one thing that I um, consistently have been saying for a long time now and proven through hundreds of examples on stream. that It's just not the case, guys. All right. So with that being said, what is a regular trading hours gap? So first I want to ask you a question. What is NASDAQ? What is this indice? A lot of you guys probably don't even, well, you, I'm assuming you have to know, I would assume. Maybe some of you don't. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this anyway. So NASDAQ 100 is called 100 for a reason. What is it? NASDAQ 100 company. So NASDAQ is a basket of 100 tech stocks. In those 100 stocks, are inside the NASDAQ 100. So here they are. And then the ES is, is going to be the top 500 stocks in America. So here are the stocks in NASDAQ. You have Apple's number one. It is almost 10% of the portfolio. Microsoft, then Navita, Amazon, Broadcom, Meta, Tesla, Alphabet, which is Google, and so on. So you have to understand that these indices are full of stocks and their pricing is based off of the stocks themselves. So if you were to take the up and down movement of each of these stocks, that is why NASDAQ or ES will move in any given time that much. Very, very fucking important to understand that, guys. So what time, uh, what time does the stock market open and close? It closes at 4 p.m. Eastern, and then it opens at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. Now, considering that the indices are full of stocks, the gap that forms from the close at 4 p.m. and then the reopening 9.30 is going to be important, right? Yeah, it definitely is. So let's check this out. This is going to blow your guys' mind. You're going to be like, 
why in the hell does no one talk about this? I've been talking about it for years now. To find out the regular trading hour gaps, you have to uh, make an adjustment on your chart. So you see down here where it says ETH, right here it says ETH right there. We're going to go ahead and click that. And then now this menu pops up and it says regular trading hours. Click on that. Now, the chart looks a lot different now, right? There's a lot of gaps that take place on here. So the reason why these are so powerful is because there's an understanding that they need to be filled and they will be filled. There's just an understanding of this. So people will say that price moved all the way down here for liquidity, right? It's just not the case, guys. So here's your low that I would think would be a important low that would cause the market to go down if it was actually a liquidity run. But then price flashes through there, doesn't even stop for it, and goes down another 400 points. But when price comes back up, they will say it was a turtle suit nonetheless. They don't care. They're just after the clout. But if you really look here, what's right here, guys? Let's, let's fill this in. It's an RTH gap. Ow. Tell me that this is a liquidity run down here, and that's why it reversed. Tell me. Please. It just did it to the tick, and it's still, that's the reason. It's the draw on, quote, liquidity. No, it should be the draw on gap, quote, unquote. Because this, look, it's not a coincidence. This happens all the time. All the time, guys. Here, price dropped down. Why did it drop down here? Because right here is the opening. That is the close of the market. And then this was the opening the next day. Boom. Price dropped down to fill that in. So remember we talked about precision earlier. So is a turtle soup that went 400 points beyond it precision? Or is it just a, a random kind of thing? It's random. But this is precision to the tick. That's precision. This here, 12 points beyond it, precision. And then if you zoom out, you'll start seeing that these really big aggressive moves down coincide. The reversals coincide with a gap being filled pretty much every single time. There's not, not many times where it doesn't. So you had this move down. They screamed liquidity. I screamed gap fill. There it is to the tick filled that gap. That's right there. Another one. Drop down to fill that gap. Now we put in a really big gap this last Tuesday. Eventually price is going to need to come up there to fill it. But it has to fill this gap right here. So I want you guys to put this on your chart. This gap that is at 19,519 to 19,635. I want you to put that on your chart. And then watch as price pushes down into this. And then I want you to look on Twitter, okay? And look at all the people that say turtle soup. They all will be saying it's a turtle soup. To me, the only time turtle soups are valid is 9.30 to 9.45 a.m. Every day I see a liquidity run, a legit liquidity run that is not random. It is precision, and it is beautiful every single day. Here's an example of it. Boom. It ticks above and stops everyone out that was short here. Stops them out and then goes down. That's a liquidity run. Boom. Stops them out. No more than 10 points. This one's actually 4 points. This one's 2. Here's one right here. This one is 8 points. Here's another one. This one here is... That one's a little bit more. That one's like 20. Here's another one. Wicks above it. How many points is it? 10. Here's another one. How many points is it? 8. Another one. How many is it? 3. There's another one. How many is it? 7. Another one. How many is it? So there's a reason why I have these boxes on my chart because they are are they act as liquidity um, runs, like legit ones that are small points and act with precision. All right, so how right. do you use regular trading hour gap? Yeah. All right, let's go to regular trading hours. So they act as a magnet, right? But they also act as a bias. They give you a bias in the AM pretty easily. I'll show you what I mean by that. So I want you to remember the time 1030. Now, we're just going to start at a random day here. We'll just start right here. This is the previous New York session. This is the opening of it. So we're going to go ahead and put that on our chart here. So now when we open up in the next New York session at the New York opening, price is going to usually um, either move towards it and fill it, or it's going to consolidate above it. Let's go forward here. Now, 
At 10.30, where are we at, considering the gap? Have we filled it? Yeah. Now, after 10.30, do we immediately stay above it or go below it? We go below it. So we went below the gap. It's a good indication that price is going to go lower. Let's go to the next day here. All right, so price opens up with quite a large gap. It immediately opens up, pushes into it, but then holds it. Now let's go 10.30. Are we above or below the gap? We're above it. It's held. Bullish day. Beautiful, right? You guys seeing this? Let's go to the next day here. All right, this day opens up with this little tiny gap, but you can still use it just how I taught you guys. So 10.30, we're almost there. Let's go a little bit farther forward. All right, 10.30 or what's price likely to do to go lower? Boom. That's how it's done, son. So you guys see that alone is an amazing way to trade with it. And then if you combine it with the high time frame, using it for why reason for why price is coming down. For example, there is a little bit of gap left open here. We're going to go ahead and put it on our chart and watch how price is just drawn to this like no other. Many said that this was in fact a liquidity run down. They just don't realize that there's a gap. They just don't even know it exists. All right. So again, to the tick fill precision price action. Okay, let's keep going forward here. So now we're getting into, uh, this is Friday of last week. Oh, the Friday before, my bad. All right, so 1030. This is another beautiful fucking example of what I teach. So 1030, where are we in terms of the little gap that we opened up with? We're above it. What's price do? It goes up. Let's go to a 10 minute, speed this up a little bit. All right, so we have that regular hours gap we put on our chart, price suck it out, filled it, and then we open up with a huge gap. But look, this is the RTH gap down here. Look how price is just drawn towards it. It just acts as a magnet for price. Every time price gets away from it, pulls it right back to it. And now this is where we're at right now. So at 9 p.m., are we above or below the gap? We're above it. It's probably likely to go up from here, um, but it made a really good attempt to fill it. And then the, here's the thing. If it fills it on another indice, like ES, for example, boom, look at the fill of that gap to the tick precision. Precision, guys. That's precision. That's a real. If it's not precise, it's not right. Period, in my opinion. It cannot be off by more than 10 points and still be a viable edge in price. Because how do you trade it then? How can you trust it then? You can wait for confirmation or whatnot. That's the same thing I have with fair value gaps, so I don't trade them anymore. They lack precision on a regular basis. Yes, sometimes you get them where they do, but yes, just like a random line on a chart will act as resistance and, and, and support as well. But they're not precise, are they? No, they overshoot it. That's random price action. If it's precise to the tick, that's not random. That is, in fact, an edge in price that exists. So tonight we made 40 plus points on stream. We, I have been working on this gap video for quite some time. Now, when I recorded this video in the beginning part that you guys just watched, price was right here. Now, just as I said in the video, that price would seek this gap. It, it, it seeked it out, all right. It attacked it. And then... The gap that we had opened up with here to here was then filled as well. So then now price has attacked this gap. Bam. Gone through it. Filled this one as well. Boom. Filled it. Filled it. And then now there's one gap left lower. So price is dropping at a rapid pace here. Boom. To fill this gap. I believe there's actually one even lower. You guys that are in my uh, Discord, we've been calling this all week. Um, just nailing it to the downside here. We have two more gaps even much lower here. So today we actually opened up inside of that gap. And then just right through, nothing was even there. Which automatically tells you, well, okay, now it's going to go to the next gap lower. Which we might get it tonight, hitting it tonight. So I'm going to try a short here and see what happens. See if it starts moving down, attacking this gap or not. But as I said in the video, price will attack gaps. So we went over three different types of gaps in this 
four different types of gaps technically in this video. You have your new week opening gap, which is when it opens and closes at a different price point from Sunday to Friday. And then we had a new day opening gap um, Tuesday. So this was Sunday night is when I recorded the part of this video. And now here we have this gap here. I actually have some clips of me trading uh, these gaps because they were quite prevalent. I'm going to go ahead and play those for you guys. And uh, I just want to stop for a second and show you guys that what I'm saying works. I'm not just saying it because it's cool to say or something like that. It's some I trade every single time there is one. I take advantage of this and I trade it. All right. So part of trading gaps is understanding that they work as they draw, right? So here I am in a, a take, or I mean a Apex Trader funding account, but I understand that there's an RTH gap below that price is obviously seeking to fill, right? So I can use this to my advantage and size up because it gives me a different level of confidence in my trading. I think this is an important part of RTH gaps that we should be utilizing as traders. All right, here I am in a trade. Um, we have a gap below, so I don't necessarily think that it's going to fill the gap right now, but I do think it is going to get price as close as it can so that in the morning when we wake up in RTH, in the regular trading hours, once the New York session opens, I think they want it to be very close to here so that it's within range of filling the gap in the AM. I say this because... I think they want to fill the gap tomorrow so then they can close it back up where it opens at, form a doji, and then push price up. But um, knowing this is another way that you can draw context from the gap. Gaps are very good for context in developing um, a narrative for why price should be doing what it does. If you have a narrative behind your trades, it's really going to help um, in your trading in general. Um, opportunities like this are, are, aren't every single day, right? Um, we have that really, we have that new week opening gap, which most communities, most traders aren't even aware of that it's there. Um, and they don't think of it as like a draw because they're so concentrated on liquidity that they miss that there is an amazing draw on price. The only real one that's out there really is inefficiencies in these. Um, they're focused on liquidity, so they're, they're missing the big picture. So let me know how many of you guys um, saw this and how many of you guys should probably stop going to other communities because the way I'm teaching is not going to work with the way they're teaching price, right? They're teaching straight ICT concepts. I'm doing something totally different. So if you're in those other communities, like getting like blah, 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 blah in your ear, and you're still struggling, you kind of got to step back and say, who's actually helping me to succeed here? And hands down, it's me. I know it is. So maybe you should drop those other uh, companies. There's a dude in the chat earlier that said, yeah, I was listening to this other group streaming. I was like, whoa, what the hell? I didn't even think about you guys doing that until he said that. So I don't know. I would just, uh, if I was you guys, I would... I would drop them, you know, save your ass some money because I don't think they're doing it like we are, guys. I, do, I really don't think they're doing it like we are. So, all right, I'm going to add on again here. I just got home, uh, getting out of the car now. But I'm going to add on here again for this drop down, this last one. So you got one drop. Oops. Oops. There we go. So you got one drop here. And then, boom, two, and then, boom, three, down. So, yay, yay, let's go, guys, let's get it. There it is, dropping it in hot, dropping it like it's hot. All right, I'll see you guys in the chat. Let's get it. If it breaks above here, obviously, I'm going to have to go ahead and exit. So, let me put that stop in. 
There she goes. There she goes, guys. Uh, no, 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 no. Getting paid. Later, guys. All right, so there's the first one. Let's get that fucking money, guys. Let's fucking go. This is what I'm about, guys. I'm about making fucking money. No fucking around. Just grinding for that money, man. So either about it or not, either with me or not, let's go, guys. Let's fucking get it. Almost home, though. As soon as I get home, I will drop a fucking video for you guys and show you what's up. If you missed out on this, I'll show you why and how you should have been able to catch this trade. Especially after our live stream. Uh, you should have known. So, if you did not catch it, don't worry. I will walk you through and explain to you guys um, why you possibly missed out on it and how you can avoid missing out on it next time. Sorry for the yelling in the beginning of the video. I was just a little pumped, a little hyped. So I've been sitting here waiting for this for like an hour driving. I was driving back home and I'm like, it's rolling, it's rolling, it's rolling. Half back that bitch. Oh shit, oh shit, drop it like it's hot. Drop it, and then it dropped it. And now it's hot. So, yeah, yay. Yeah. All right, and then that was the second video right there. All right, guys, so another day. Still working on the video here. Uh, now you guys get to see how long it takes me to make one of these videos. Uh, Sunday to Friday, I just put a lot of time into these, but that's beside the point. The point here is that that gap, the lowest one was filled today. Let's go to regular trading hours here, switch it over. Boom, look at this. Showcasing the skill right here of gap fills. What you'll find is that most people don't know that these exist. Don't know that they draw price to them. Don't even know that it's a thing. And you'll start seeing this on Twitter. You'll start seeing your local guru claiming that it did something for some reason or another. But when in fact, it was just filling the gap. So here's that gap. Boom. Today we dropped down, filled it. Let's go back to electronic trading hours so we can see here. All right. So beautiful, right? So it came bit down, dropped down, and went back to balance my strategy here. So... And this is my strategy that I refer to as half back to balance here. Perfect to the touch on the four hour. Beautiful. Look at that. Bam. Filled the gap and went half back to balance. And that was the low. So now we'll see the low being set for a little bit unless it's going to continue down to these lower gaps here. So we had a gap, many gaps in here that price uh, filled one right here. There was one right here that got filled that caused that retracement. There was another one in here that caused this retracement. And then now we have the fill of this gap here. We have it going back to the balanced area. It could come down into here, but I think it has to get out through all this. And I don't think it would be able to do that very easily. So that should help you guys understand the power of the strategy and let you know which gurus are real and which ones are fake, which ones are showing you real stuff and which ones are just, you know, Saying what everyone else is saying. Alright, so I hope this helps you guys see that gaps are very, very profitable to use. And if you use them in combination with my other concepts, whew, it's uh, almost unstoppable. So tonight on stream, we made... 50, let me see here the exact amount I tracked it. Um, yeah, so here's the win, wins and losses on today's stream. You know, we had a $180 gain, $20 loss. $30, $940 gain. And then that is about 50 points profit or so. And then in this Discord chat, after the hour stream that we did, I started posting about an upcoming trade I was going to take. So here it is here. Posted along the way, made a video about it, uh, break it down some more. And then here we are now, which I want to make it clear, the Discord is not a... Si signal service that's not what i'm about guys i'm about teaching but i want to make sure you guys get paid along the way as well so i think it's very important you guys see growth and success and you guys have wins along the way if you don't have wins along the way what why would you continue to do it you know and i want to make sure you guys stick with it and uh, don't give up so you guys are able to make it to the next level so if you're interested in getting funded 
with some companies that you can actually trust, you should check out my website. It's verifiedfundingcompanies.com. So I had a long journey to find funding companies that I could actually trust. I went through a lot of bad ones, a lot, a lot of bad ones, <laughs> uh, to find a, a set of good companies. All these companies I 100% trust. I guarantee that they pay you out. So as long as you use my code or my link, you will get a insurance on your uh, funding pretty much. So if you follow the rules, you do exactly what they do and they refuse to pay you out, I will step in and pay you out. When Apex Trader Funding went haywire there, I stepped in and paid out several several people, the ones that hit me up and asked for it. So definitely check that out, guys. I'll put the link to this in the description as well. You can sign up for my newsletter. And I'm sure you heard me talk about it a few times in the group or in this video, but I have a Discord, right? So many of you guys asked and asked and asked until I finally broke down and was like, all right, I'm going to do one. So I hired two guys to help me out with it. And then they manage it for me, like the tickets. They do all the um, back end work that it takes to run a Discord because it's not like very easy like many people think it is. It actually takes a lot of time and effort to build one of these out. So I live stream five six days out of the week total live stream hours equal somewhere around 30 hours a week of teaching in the moment because i truly believe that's the only way traders can learn how to trade is by trading with the instructor just like if you want to learn how to do anything you need an instructor to do it with you as you do it and then that's how you learn because you think about anything else any other industry other than trading how do you actually learn you have to do it with people, and then doing it with them is how you learn. You don't learn through a course, right? Unless it is like something basic like doing Excel sheets. Yeah, get a course for that. Cool. But if you actually want to learn how to trade, how to catch trades like the one I'm in right now, um, how to trade these gaps, how to trade half back to balance, how to trade my end of day drift strategy, how to trade my agent session turn strategy, how to trade my slip and rip strategy, all these strategies are unique to me. My SMC soup strategy, they're all unique to me. You're not going to learn from anyone else because I came up with them. So definitely check out the link in the description for that, guys. And don't miss out on the opportunity to learn from me before I hit that exponential gain where I'm making plus a million dollars a month. And by that point, the chat will be overwhelmed with people. People will be really interested in it, but then I'm not going to be willing to teach. So I'm willing to teach right now and it's a win-win. I do this anyways. I might as well talk about it while I'm doing it and help other people do it as well. Alrighty guys, so hopefully I see you in my discord in stream, getting that money with us day in and day out. I will see you guys hopefully in the charts.